This is the way. This is just really cool. You're supposed to say this is the way. Oh, th sorry. This is the way. Now you can't ever take your helmet off too. Ever? Nope. Forever? Yep. I mean, you can take it off by a fire if no one else is around and you have to eat something. Okay, if you're alone? Yeah. All right, cool. Can I pet see my face? Your pets? Yeah. No. Unless you bathe in the living waters of Mandalore afterwards. Sounds good. Welcome to the Back to Basics podcast. I'm Dr. Christopher Seitz here with my brother Jason Seitz, RN, to break down complex medical topics and bring them back to basics so they're easy to understand. Uh, today is May the 4th, and as such, we will be talking about complicated medical topics in the space. In space. In space. In space. Actually, yeah, literally in space. Yeah. I wasn't saying the space of something, but no, it's just in space. Yep. Exactly. So, so you could say that this is episode two. We did another Star Wars special uh, a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. We missed, we had a gap year. Yep. So, so if you were, if you want to listen back, I think it was, it was May 4th of 2021 and we talked about lightsaber injuries. So this time we're going to talk about something very similar to lightsaber injuries, something that comes with lightsabers. We're going to be talking about force injuries specifically, mm -hmm. how to handle them how to recognize them, what to do, how to avoid them, mm -hmm. um, and just kind of like the mechanisms of injuries that you're going to see and the nature of illnesses that you might see developed from force injuries specifically. All right, but before we can do that, we got to jump into, take it back to basics, what is the force? Yeah, the force is a living energy field that uh, binds and goes through basically all things. So a lot of people like to think of it as a power that can be wielded, and that's not really the case. Um, it's a tension, a balance that sort of binds the universe together, and you can tap into that, but we are all as much a part of the force as the force is a part of us, so we're not really like borrowing power from the universe and using it. We're directing the universe uh, in a way as a being in the force. You know? Is it so. an energy source, or is it more just... Like how, you know what I mean? So, <sighs> Or yes, it can be yes turned no. into I, an energy source. I would say it is the basic energy source of all things that okay. it's the thing that binds everything together it runs through us it's like the same way people yeah. would talk about like a soul like that that type of yeah and know, living like... living things basically give off the force mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. then also basically pay into the power that is the corporeal force which allows things like force ghosts and things like that to happen okay. so we're not we're not talking about force ghosts though no okay it's gonna be right. too complicated so very advanced techniques. It takes years to master. Okay. Okay. Um, so that's what the force is. It, it's energy. And if we can think of energy in terms of illnesses and injuries, it it's going to make a lot more sense to us, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. don't be so scared by the mysticism that's surrounded by the force. Just understand that it is energy. And that energy can be very dangerous and deadly to uh, you or your patients. So Depending on how it's used and utilized. Exactly. And there's typically... Two ways that the force is utilized. It is mm -hmm. is kind of a bipolar um, thing. There's the dark side and the light side. And the light side more has to do with how you tap into the force, being more empathetic and more um, loving, while the dark side is more uh, passion. Like, like when I say loving, I should I should unconditional loving and, and compassion, empathy, peace inner peace, mm -hmm. while the dark side is a little bit more about using emotions. And those can be positive or negative emotions, but the dark side does tend to kind of feed on itself a little bit. Okay, okay. And we don't want to be offensive here or anything like that because the force is used in, in the middle a, a lot too. You know, people tap into both of those sides. Um, but if you have traditional training, you're probably either have had Jedi training or you've had Sith training, which would be dark side training. Gotcha. Um, we don't want to be like offensive to anyone that might have like tapped into dark side use or anything like that. But we are going to talk a little bit about recognizing Sith specifically because generally speaking, the Sith is a cult. I mean, it is a, it is a dark side user cult and typically statistically. I think you got to be careful using cult though because again, I think for a lot of people, this is a way of life um, and a lot of people struggle, right? A lot of people struggle. It's a religion. We could say that. Okay. Cult, cult has a negative connotation. Specifically Sith. The, the, you tapping Sith into the are dark specifically side. the religion that like have to do more with like hurting people and taking over the galaxy and having power. So like I don't know if I'm necessarily wrong saying that there's a little bit of a negative connotation that goes with that. That's true. That That's true. I don't want to paint all dark side users as necessarily Sith, but it can be a slippery slope, sure, right? Sure. It's how you use your power. So first what we want to talk about is unfortunately the statistics do show, and this could be because of cultural 
norms. This could be because of, you know, poor systems that are built, but the majority of force related crimes are conducted by Sith. We don't want to be culturally insensitive, but I think generalizations, you got to be careful using generalizations, but typically crimes, force crimes are committed by Sith. Right. So recognizing Sith is an important thing in terms of scene safety. So I just kind of want to talk about like common. And again, we don't want to get too much into like specifics about like what a Sith looks like. We can only kind of give you what the statistics have supported. Mm -hmm, Okay. mm -hmm. Um, Dark robes. Mm -hmm. Red lightsabers. Spiky bits. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that this is an opportunity too. like when you're doing scene size up and scene safety, like you can like use the people who are there. Right. Like a lot of times they'll tell you. Like, I think this guy might be Sith, based on maybe what happened previously before you arrived on scene. We got to be careful of assumptions, but there are, you know, specific things. So other things that we A lot can of times see they will tell you as well, though. Yeah. If I'm being honest, like, if you engage, most of the time, they'll let you know. So some conversational cues when you're, that kind of tell you that you're talking with a Sith. Some mannerisms, some, like, common hot button topics that they like to talk about to, that makes it kind of obvious. Cackling laugh is really common. Mm-hmm. Sarcasm, but not in a fun way where it's like, you're shorter than I expected talking right. to a tall person. Sure. You know what I mean? More like um, they want to harm you or your friends. I also think you have to, like, th- you have to tap into, again, scene safety is looking into, like, where are these types of force injuries that we're talking about today more likely to occur? Like, obviously, I said recognizing Sith is important, but typically, you know, again, this is just going back to the data, starships and the desert yeah volcanoes to common environments that that, that they um, are sort of drawn to um robotic parts if they have a lot of robotic parts typically what can happen with dark side users is it can kind of eat away at your body and cause necrosis so they have to kind of replace that with robotic parts it's also is there kind a, of a style thing that's true is there a like ratio of body parts to electronic parts that increases i think there is i don't know the exact date on that more than a hand yeah yeah, that's true. Yeah. I would say like wheezing or COPD is a common thing that we see in a lot of Sith. And I don't know if that's a comorbidity because of their chronic smokers. They tend to be more in volcanic ash areas, and that's why it causes that. But that's true. Um, generally speaking, I'm not saying if you have COPD, you're a Sith. I'm no. saying if you're a Sith, you might have COPD. You have an increased chance of having COPD, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. So, yeah, those are, you know, things to watch out for. And like the extremely symptomatic kind of COPD. Yes. Interestingly. Wheezing. But, yeah, I like yeah. can't get through a sentence. Right, you know, right, 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 right. Um, so things to watch out for. Injuries to watch out for. Mainly we're dealing with force, force pushes and pulls. Mm-hmm. Okay? So if you compare this to explosive injuries or blast injuries, it makes a lot more sense. Because you have to understand you're being hit by a concussive wave of the force first. Mm-hmm. And what we would call that is the primary injury from a blast. Mm -hmm. The concussive wave hits you, that can cause damage. What kind of damage can it cause? Well, over it's like an overpressure pressurization wave um, that is coming in contact with body surfaces. So you can things have things like uh, like blast lung, like pulmonary barotrauma from it. Basically, gas filled organs are the most susceptible because of the pressurization. The it's a, well, and it's a pressure, so it's it's not only the f- the force of the pressure hitting your body, which can jar organs and that sort of thing. It's almost like a deceleration injury in, in that way. Um, it's, it's not a deceleration injury. I'm just saying like in the same way that the force itself can do that, but also it's the pressure difference, right? The change so a, in pressure. The change so in pressure. So like always... your, your tympanic membranes, right? So like you said, like air-filled, like your ear is air-filled. So you, you can rupture tympanic membranes. You can have like you know, plural issues where like your lungs pop, things like that. Mm-hmm. Even um, bowel, you can have bowel injuries. Yeah, they're abdominal gas hemorrhage and yeah. like perforation is pretty common because mm-hmm. of the gases in there. Because you got to think everything is setting from an higher, uh, area of higher concentration to lower concentration. So when you have pressure changes, it moves the gases in ways that can be mm-hmm. uh, damaging. So now you're, you've are you been thrown into the air. You've been hit by a concussive wave. There may be things flying with you that were also hit by the concussive wave. That might be intentional. A lot of times you are kind of picked up with a bunch of things, and then you're thrown. Mm-hmm. So a concussive wave hits you, and a concussive wave hits all it's these hard objects. To, it's, hard to know, it's hard to know, too, if that's like, is it the f- whole force, com- you know, percussive wave grabbing everything, or is the perpetrator purposely picking up multiple objects at once? 
a lot of times they like to throw things at you, you know what I mean? And then they're While like, you're you know, being what would be better? I'll throw you and the things at you at the same time, yeah, right? Yeah. So like uh, someone concentrating hard enough and that was that's more adept with the force could probably cause those objects to continuously hit you in the air. Mm-hmm. So it kind of depends on what situation you get yourself into. Sure. But secondary injuries would be those objects striking you, right? For instance, glass, rocks, uh, small creatures, anything like mm-hmm. that, hitting you in the air, other people. If, if, it, if it's got multiple. Boxes, specifically. Mm-hmm. I feel like a lot of boxes. Yeah. Small robots. Glass in the shape windows. of a box. Yep. So blunt force trauma, slashes, stabbing, stuff like that. That would be like secondary injuries in a, in a blast. Um, tertiary would be where you end up. So you get you hit an object, right? Or maybe you like fly down a garbage chute. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then you eventually hit the ground or you hit like an antenna. Yeah. Right. So that's kind of like that. Like that injury there and then there's actually quaternary injuries or quaternary i think it's quaternary 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 injuries like the fourth type would be anything that um happened that isn't a result it's almost like a comorbidity of the trauma yeah it's kind of weird so So like if you had like asthma exacerbation because you're like hanging out on a satellite dish in the cold afterwards mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. you the barrel trauma caused an exacerbation of that like that's crush a, injuries. Crush injuries, yep. Um, Amputations that occur here? while you're flying through the air. Breathing problems from dust, smoke, toxic fumes. So imagine a bunch of like glass particles like getting into mm-hmm. your lungs and then you have breathing problems from that. They have like hyperglycemia listed here, but I don't really understand how that would be exacerbated from a blast. It's not like you get more sugar. I think just the, I think, yeah. Because the other thing that we, in this list is like hypertension, like chest, like angina, like chest. I think it's more of like the, obviously you have like a, uh, a flight or flight response in well, this, I, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I feel like, um, but then yeah. a lot of it is like where you end up too. Right. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Like if you hit, like if you hit a wall and you get rib fractures, that's, that's actually tertiary. That's tertiary. And then if you hit complications the floor, of breathing from the rib fractures would be the right, right. quaternary. Like hitting a sarlacc tooth, that would be tertiary. Mm-hmm. The digestion process that occurs afterwards would be quaternary. Right. So force pulls, very similar you're still going to have the four types of injuries, right? The problem is, is that the tertiary injury, since you're getting pulled towards the force user, is likely going to be a lightsaber wound, right? You're probably going to end statistically, up statistically. Yeah, yeah. I mean, not. I don't want to say 100 percent of the time. I would give it 93. Yeah, easily, easily. Um, and if again, and then you have the whole lightsaber injury piece, which in this situation would be like a tertiary injury if you're being pulled and hitting a lightsaber. Lightsaber injuries are kind of their own thing. We won't get into it today. If you want to listen back to the episode we did two years ago on lightsaber injury specifically and that type of thing. Like, a lot of misconceptions about lightsaber injuries. Yeah. So, um, you know, one thing I didn't put in, but I'll mention now, and a lot of times this happens at the end of a pull, is a force choke. Mm. So if you end up being asphyxiated uh, from the force, you know, there's no way to really clear that airway until the user is distracted by something else. That's a good point. I didn't think about that. So, but, I mean, mechanism of injury, obviously, compression of your, you know, larynx trachea, you can't breathe then, you know, you're you're possibly going to, like, pass out from the damage. The, the best thing that you can do is fake passing out earlier because they tend to drop you real quick. That's true. So you'll probably negate any necrotic damage to your brain, and then maybe you can wake up later and Mm -hmm. get the hell out, you know? Because this is really about, like, just getting away. It's not, like, our job, let the police handle, like, taking down the perpetrator of of the crime, right? Our job is to mitigate the medical damage. um, And then lastly, and this is definitely a dark side user thing, uh, is force lightning. Mm -hmm. So force lightning is similar to lightning that you would have, like, uh, on Camino or something like that if you were just struck by lightning, right? But the problem is, is it's it lasts and it's over time and it's usually at a higher voltage. So some things that we'll see, if you're going to arrest, like if you're going to die right off the bat from force lightning, it's probably because in the same way that a defibrillator works, you go into asystolic arrest due to like an immediate simultaneous depolarization of all of your cardiac cells. So the same thing that we expect a defibrillator to do, shut down the heart and let the heart restart. There's no restarting at this thing because it's just, whoop, we set it, we shut the heart off and then you're dead. Most of the time though, Force lightning is more of an AC current versus a DC current, because a DC current will will like throw you and like depolarize everything at once, whereas an AC current runs through you. And typically, when we see force lightning injuries, it's an AC current, like because it's like lasting and they can like hold you there and that sort of thing. 
So other things to do with the heart that would cause issues, like obviously like you can go into ventricular rhythms that would be a problem because of the, the interrupt cardiac function. Um, second cardiac arrests can happen sometimes due to paralysis of the medullary resp respiratory center in the brain, if you have the right kind of shocking to that area. Um, burns are, are common, usually superficial burns. If you have partial thickness burns, it's usually because of the... the uh, like sweat or if you were wet at all, um, that vaporizes and then that causes deeper burns. But usually you're dealing with like superficial burns all over the body because you have to remember that we're turning basically electrical energy into thermal energy and then they're they're burning then from that, right? Um, and usually like in a lightning strike, this happens and you have some burns and you might have some internal injuries. With force lightning, if we've learned anything from like watching like Luke's experience and stuff like that, where you can see his skeleton during the so that's actually shock. interesting. So that shows you that there, like it's not just the electrical lightning force. You also have a, a radiological component to this energy. An X-ray, right? Exactly, yeah. just like an X-ray. So we don't know exactly. We don't. There's not a lot of data on like. Risks of cancer after force electrician injuries, right. like force electric injuries. Uh, but we have to assume that like over prolonged periods of time, you you know would have increased risk of like right. things. People like think cancer. of it as like, oh my gosh, he's going to shock me. It's going to hurt. I'm going to be burnt. They don't realize that that's also a cancer ray. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, but then also just and with that, that I mean like interestingly enough, and like this this might not be completely related. We don't know because again, they're like because it's rare. But most people who have suffered from force lightning injuries don't have kids and is it because of the radiology the radiological you know that's a good point. we don't really know right. there's not a lot of data so it's, there's it's a lot more than you'd think specifically though specifically possibly a testicular cancer cancer right. ray yeah exactly mm -hmm. and that's yeah i didn't really think about that mm -hmm. the other thing is that with prolonged exposure to the lightning and the, that conversion of electrical to thermal energy is you could potentially be like cooked alive from the inside it's mm -hmm. pretty serious so mm -hmm. um so yeah, we covered electrical burns. We covered you know shockwave stuff. Um, obviously, the lightning can, could pick you up and throw you. If that's the case, then you're dealing with the blast injuries that we talked about again. Um, yeah, that's that. So now let's talk a little bit about like defensive defenses and how to like prevent this from happening. So the best thing that you can do to defend against force injuries is, is utilize the force yourself, right? Mm -hmm. Like. Push injuries, like if you respond with a pull when you're being pushed, you can negate some of that energy, and and, and that's what a lot of force users will do in, in battle. They'll you know, they're using the force in ways to counteract their enemy's attacks, right? Mm -hmm. um, lightning strikes, like if you can like tuck that into your little Yoda paw, you, you can redirect that energy, or even sometimes just sort of absorb it and hold it. In I was saying, like absorbing that energy, honestly, that like becomes a lot of like <clears throat> sometimes like fighting again like not like letting the energy run through you it doesn't cause it's just, just like with electrical currents right if there's a if there's a grounding component and then like it goes like the energy doesn't have the same thing here right yeah. force energy if you can allow it if you know how to harness it and let it flow through you you can dissipate the damage exactly that type of thing. um and this is another thing too is like if you want to know whether or not you're a force user the best way to do that is through midichlorian testing and I know that there's like a this lot of this is really drama, controversial though, yeah, yeah because people don't trust it. Oh, like the government's gonna, you know, the republic's gonna track me with midichlorian testing, and there's like a lot of stuff going on with that. But mm -hmm. like, it has proven time and time and again to be a safe procedure that will tell you if you have midichlorians. It won't necessarily tell you that you'll be able to use the force. It'll tell you that if you have the capability of using the force, and sometimes to the degree that you'll be able to use it. But if you like, I mean, this is where the controversy comes in because if you had a baby doll and you put a needle in it for every time someone checked your medical rank count over the age of one to 15 to see what the trends are. Like that's a lot of, that's a lot of needle testing. And cushion. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, yeah. I mean, I, I would say pros are, it's a safe technique. It, it's a, it's a blood draw essentially. It's mm -hmm. a, it's a safe technique and we can do that very easily with Navic computers now where you can just sort of plug it in and it'll tell you medical rank count. Mm -hmm. Um, it's a it's a poke, you know. Cons are it's a poke. It, yep. it does hurt. Like we know that when Anakin wins, you know he got a little shot. You know, so that so that does hurt. So it might be tough around kids. Um, I think it's more of like I think where, where like people have to decide is like, do you want to know or not? Right, right. Like, do you want to know that this could? Because like sometimes I think like parents have a tendency like if they know that their child might have something, then they end up directing an upbringing in a certain way. Right. Well, and the, like maybe abandoning the kid. 
or sending them off planet. Yeah. And like maybe... Well, I would say that that's the biggest con is that if you have a high enough midichlorian count, the Jedi Council will come and take your baby away. That's true. And like you'll never know your kid again, you know, but probably a better life. They can harness those abilities. I don't know though. It's really... That's what's tough, I think. Because the, high, the higher the midichlorian count doesn't necessarily... Like it also, there's no correlation to which side of the force you will air towards either right you know what i mean so there is like but that's, that's learning the discipline but that's another that's another whole controversial thing like in, in the, like the, the philosophy like do we like kids who have high metachlorian counts do we get rid of them just in case they could be bad like what if there's already well, balance but, in the force well, and do we want to risk it like, oh let's take them to the republic well it's that child's choice like that child deserves to have the choice on how they're going to utilize their ability right i don't know though because like, like, how old is it how old is enough to make that choice right like, when can you make that choice can your parents make that choice for you i don't know right like so that's kind of where things get controversial but if you want to know if you have the ability to use the force then then the medical procedure of getting your midichlorians drawn is very simple and, mm-hmm. and it's safe and, and we would encourage that but there's a lot of you know social aspects of that that, that could cause issues right so right But then, like, the other thing, too, is if you can develop use of the Force enough, there are ways that you can make huge advances in in medicine. Mm -hmm. You know, speaking from our career, there's Force healing, you know, Mm -hmm. which which is a big deal. Which really, from what I can tell, Force healing is more about essentially like a time warp. It's like basically your body is basically healing at an accelerated rate. It's not necessarily introducing. Like, you can't really heal someone from a virus from Force healing from force healing mm-hmm, it's more mm-hmm. about it's accelerating the time yeah so if you have an autoimmune disorder you might actually spike that disorder by using force healing on that person because you're ramping that. up their body's time you know and then i think like there are things that we haven't even like tapped into like have you ever heard of the tragedy of darth plagueis the wise Mm-mm, no um he was so adept with the dark side of the force that he could actually manipulate midichlorians to create life wow so he actually knew of a way to prevent his loved ones from dying, which is pretty exciting. I guess. Yeah. Exciting is one way to put it. Yeah. I mean, that's awesome. You can you can prolong life. You can create life and prolong life with midichlorians. So, and uh, it, it's a tragedy because what happened was the only thing he was so powerful. The only thing that he was really afraid of was losing his power, mm-hmm. and eventually his apprentice who he taught everything he knew, killed him in his sleep. Mm. And that's exactly what happened. But, uh, yeah. And, and that's, I think that's a piece that like we can get into in a, in a different episode is like, yeah, I mean the mental health side of this is like a whole different topic, right? Like the PTSD and mental toll that occurs to those who have like had their mind read or warped or, you know, like infiltrated by the force. Mm-hmm. Like they, they can be used that way too, right? There's, yeah. there's that whole mental health component that we can get into a whole different time. Yeah. And, and, like, stories like that are not uncommon, unfortunately. Well, and that's the thing is, like, it's the cost of power, I guess, a little bit. You know what I mean? It's, like, how you use your power. Like, the power itself isn't evil or good. Mm-hmm. It's who's wielding it. You know, right, and I think right. that's kind of the lesson to remember. But uh, Well, and that's where Disney really stepped in by combining this different stuff. Because, like, with great power comes great responsibility. And I can say that because Spider-Man. Disney owns both. Yeah. Yeah. No, I completely agree. Yeah. The stories that they tell are really important for people to kind of manifest in their own lives so that we can have, you know, safer use of the force. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah, I think that about covers it. Uh, we'll be back probably next May 4th to uh, celebrate with you again. And we'll probably talk about uh, something maybe a little different, maybe blaster injury, you know, send, send in whatever you, you're most interested in. Um, I thought about covering maybe like environmental uh traumas and stuff like that from different creatures poisons things like that Um, i also would love to explore the the cloning and its effect on coordination in stormtroopers but that's a whole different topic as well yeah but yeah maybe next time so so cool all right well until next time uh may the fourth be with you also with you is that how that goes yeah it can i mean it's kind of the catholic church (laughs) (laughs) but uh may the fourth be with you always and uh stay sweet we'll see you next time all right take care hey guys thanks so much for taking a listen uh if you are studying for the national registry exam we're here to help we have a national registry prep program uh to help you pass that exam check us out at guardiantestprep.com if you'd like continuing education credits uh for listening to our podcast or watching this on youtube Follow us at guardiancme.com, 100% free CAPSI credits. Uh, No matter what state or country you're in, uh, we're here to help. So again, we thank you so much for listening. We hope you have a wonderful week.